Hi, this is Kimberly. Before we jump into today's Ganon Stalk and his Wicked Step Martyr timeline video, I wanted to respond to a couple of recent comments that I got on my channel. I'm not even mad and I didn't have to block them. You know why? Because they weren't assholes. That's the only requirement here. Don't be a fucking asshole. People either love me or they hate me. It's always been that way, not just on my YouTube channel. If I could ever get them to listen to me long enough, they would sometimes change their mind about hating my guts. I would just pretend that I didn't notice that they hated me and would just go on my merry way, cracking jokes and shit, and sometimes I could get them to turn around, even the most sour of sour pusses. I would implement this tactic mostly at my place of employment because you spend more time with those assholes than you do your real family. Several people have commented on my voice the entire time I've had my channel. The beginning of my talking videos are very, very cringy. Even I can't stand to listen to them. But I'm so glad to those of you that stuck with me while I learned how to talk to an audience while dealing with crippling anxiety. I don't have that now when I speak to y'all, my people. I love having people. You all will never understand how much you mean to me. But yeah, in the beginning, I was, well, a little rough around the edges, and it doesn't even begin to describe it. I was unpolished, primitive, uncultured, graceless. If you've listened to one of them, you'll know. But with practice and with learning to edit a video, it's much better now. Always room for improvement, though. These are the two comments I got on the very same day recently. LOLOL, I initially didn't like your voice until I just listened to the last letters from Chris in full and it was funny as hell. And now, I'm a fan. Well, thank you. The other one was, hey, I have to admit, your voice irritated me the first video I listened to. Please, no offense to you personally, but now, girl, I fucking love you. Thank you. I love you, too. I didn't take offense. I used to take offense at any little thing because I'm sensitive. And I'm like a delicate flower. So, I'm going to keep this simple. Thank you very much. I love you, too. And now, on with the timeline. In search for our little boy, Blue, Gannon Stout. Thursday, February 13th, 2020. On a cold and snowy winter morning, El Paso County Search and Rescue started searching through snowy fields in a southern area of Douglas County, Colorado. They began at around 9 a.m. on a private property along South Perry Park Road near Larkspur, Colorado. A sheriff's official said, you have to canvas every single one of those houses to see if there is a possible video of the child. Simply having a sighting of the child on camera would be really encouraging. They were hoping this would be the day. It was Thursday, February 13th, 2020, day 17 of the search for Gannon. I think most figured he was no longer alive at this point. I was one of the ones that held out hope that insanity lost her shit and had hidden Gannon somewhere safe just to drag Alan Landon through the mud. Kind of a fuck you to both of them both off doing their own thing while she physically looked out for the children, Lena and Gannon. Well, we had all hoped she had him hidden somewhere. The boy with the million dollar smile as one of my lovely people described him in the comments of another video the other day. I like that. The boy with the million dollar smile describes our Lord G-Man to a, and forgive a pun, but it describes him to a T to a T, just to rub it in her square duck lips, fugly face. A team of about 50 people appeared to be given instructions before they began walking in a line, using sticks and shovels to comb through the snow. Temperatures hovered nearly 10 degrees below freezing. Wait a minute, why didn't they just say temperatures hovered around 22 degrees instead of 10 degrees below freezing? They're just trying to make it sound more dramatic. But that is damn cold. As searchers using poles were seen hiking up Sierra Pines Lane near the Palmer Lake Regional Recreation Area. This area is near the borders of El Paso and Douglas Counties. 
crews were using long poles and shovels to poke through the snow as they walked in the same direction. The snow was estimated to be five plus inches deep. And let me show you all this weird ass crude boorish footage if I can find it again. I hate my disorganized self sometimes. I really do frustrate myself. But enough of me and my flaws and shit. I did find it. Look at them. I don't know. It just rubbed me the wrong way. It was, it was published to Twitter, I think. There were over 80 trained individuals with specialized assets. A Jefferson County bloodhound was on location, as was a mounted horse patrol team from El Paso Sheriff's Office. There is so much involved in forming these search parties, so much time wasted. It's just too damn bad that the investigators in these types of cases can't do what it takes to get this bitch to tell us what the hell happened. Why the hell couldn't they just cut to the chase, get down to business, cut a long ass story short and get on with it, make it brief, grab integrity by her cousin at hair, march her over to the search area where they believe she first positioned Gannon's remains and say, start talking, damn it, speak. Give her her old phone back and tell her to make a Facebook post about it. I think she would be thrilled to dash off a seven page long run on sentence. People that break laws don't follow orders and refuse to be law abiding. They commit acts of lawlessness and misconduct, delinquency. They create turmoil, mayhem, disruptions, bedlam, frenziedness. People that break the law, well, when the law catches up, they, in turn, get treated with kid gloves, like they're all delicate and shit. We have to be sensitive to their needs and remember that they have fucking rights. You know what? Fuck that shit. Sometimes I get tired of being an upstanding, good, and model citizen. I comply with laws, respect the law, I'm law-abiding, I'm a fucking stand-up, decent citizen, good American, good Samaritan, and have respect for the law. In turn, I get shit on. People like Gannon get shit on. Sometimes I just get tired of being a fucking goody two-shoes. My despicable brother used to taunt me with that all the time. You're such a goody goody, goody two-shoes. I was so confused. I thought I was being a good citizen, but he made it seem like I was doing something unsavory, even though I was a paragon of virtue. I outgrew that shit, though. So, I would commit a minor infraction to prove that I was not a goody-goody, like dropping my Brussels sprout under the bench seat where I would sit in the kitchen for dinner. When they were discovered, I blamed it on my brother. But I, I can't lie. I've never been able to lie. That was one of the only lies I've ever told in my life. But I told on myself so quickly that it was almost in the same sentence. I always did that shit. I always confessed anything in the least bit minor or I would toss and turn, toss and turn at night. Then my brother would pester my parents to give me a spanking for committing said minor infraction, or as he called it, a whoopin'. They never did. After the confession part, I would then throw myself on my bed and cry and cry. Oh my God, it was always a scene. I've been perfecting my slam off to bed routine as early as I can remember. Only, I wasn't allowed to slam the door until I got my own place. You know, so, but I forgot that rule a couple of times, especially when I became a rebellious teenager. But y'all, it was in my blood. I learned it from the best. Have you ever seen a British woman slam off to bed? It's mind blowing. As the Stalks babysitter would say. According to my mother, sometimes they wouldn't emerge for three or four days. And someone, usually the person that pissed them off, but they would have to leave tea and toast outside the door. But I saw my mom perfect it in the 18 years that I lived with my parents. I was enthralled. 
Even though I would jump when, out of the blue it seemed, I would hear her hollering, usually at my dad, it didn't matter where you were in the house, you could hear it. It would get closer and closer, and then would come the relief part when I realized I wasn't her subject matter. Finally, I would jump out of my skin again when the slam of the bedroom door would come. Sometimes she would open the master bedroom door that took so much abuse. It never did fail to slam, though, but sometimes she would open the door that took so much abuse to holler out some things that she had just thought of after the slamming, and then slam again. And then a few times she would open and slam, open and slam, open and slam. It would seem as though she was trying to break down the goddamn door, but she was just making a point that she was pissed, so pissed that she had to slam the door over and over and over. I'm all quiet and shit after I have my tantrum and slam off to bed. Once the door slams, I usually promptly fall asleep, and we as a family would come to the conclusion that Mom or Kimberly was just overtired again. Presently, I still can't lie, and I would never, never, ever, ever drop a good Brussels sprout to the floor. Now I love them, but my mother bless her heart and may God rest her beautiful soul, but she would boil them to death until they were mush. That was just the way my brother liked him, the tormentor. He always had a second helping, like he was damn showing off and he'd gulp them down. He gulped everything. I would often stare at him during dinner, just with a mixture of horror and amazement. Ugh. It and he would eat one section at a time, turn his plate, and it, I, it was kind of fascinating. Just take my word for it. I should have known not to blame it on him with, you know, and I would have to hear that at every fucking meal that they were served. Well, your brother loves Brussels sprouts. Well, you know what? Fuck him, I wanted to say, and I would say that in my head, but I would just smile demurely. All right, I'm done with my sidebar. I'll get back to the timeline narrative. If you will recall, I was speaking with regard to Thursday, February 13, 2020. By this date, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office had received 465 tips. These tips included possible sightings, search suggestions. I wish they would detail some of those search suggestions. Probably be an interesting video of its own, but one of the pointers or tips, if you will, offered to the sheriff's office was how to respond with urgency at the first report of a missing child. Oh, wait. Those were my personal notes. Excuse me. I'm dashing off a little note to the El Paso Sheriff. Nothing to concern yourself about. However, back to the words of advice the Sheriff's Office had warmly welcomed on their temp line in relation to the missing child Gannon was suspicious activity, found property, possible evidence, and video, phone, and drone evidence, and a plethora of social media related information can only imagine. Now, if only they didn't keep losing sight of flighty being a fucking flight risk. They, they had so many opportunities to catch the bitch red-handed. Anyway, the affidavit on this day that we're talking about, line 161, quote, the majority of the conversations between Letitia and Albert Stout began around February 13th, 2020. I guess piece of shit was wanting to know if Albert was still her valentine. Oh, sorry, I was quoting. Over several days, Letitia's story continued to change. During a phone call on February 13, 2020, Letitia stated that Gannon was burned by a candle to the point that his skin bubbled and that Gannon peeled the burns off and wiped blood on his bedroom wall. Okay, Mr. Stout did not ask about the blood information. Mr. Stout did not ask about blood on the walls of his room during this call, because he's a dumbass. I, sorry, he's not a, you know, why didn't he? 
Sorry I called him a dumbass. The fact that she provided information about blood on the wall likely indicates her knowledge of the murder scene, end quote. And I think y'all know which parts were mine. Just take those out of the fucking quote. But fucking bitch, accusing Gannon of wiping blood on the wall. You mean the blood you initiated, Pisa? She told Albert that Gannon was burned by a candle to the point that his skin bubbled. Well, when she speaks and tells her lies, Pisa's words, a.k.a. shit talk, comes to a seething, gurgling, simmering boil. It blisters up and peels off the wallpaper with her fucking words. Then she shits the bed and wipes her shitty fecal matter on the walls, the floor, the ceiling, and in her hair, likewise on Albert's dress blues hanging in the closet. She's a damn nauseating, vile, frightful, beastly, putrid, shit-spewing, rank bitch. And in relation to the first car rental that piece of shit did, the affidavit says, line 58, quote, Letitia provided statements to her husband, Albert Stout, that she was concerned about putting mileage on her Tiguan lease, which justified the vehicle rental. It is noted, however, that during the time of the Kia rental, Letitia only put about 71 miles on the vehicle. During the time period Letitia had the Kia, she would not provide the location of the Tiguan, and Mr. Stalk never saw the Tiguan. For example, she told Mr. Stalk that the Tiguan was near French Elementary School, end quote. Meanwhile, back at the site of the search, the media relations manager slash public information officer, Miss Jackie Kirby, was fresh on the scene after sleeping off two bottles of wine the night before. Just as soon as yesterday's unpleasant press briefing experience concluded, her performance of how to create different ways to say the same damn thing again and again and again and not answer questions posed by the media for dummies did not exactly go off without a hitch. She was glad to be able to dress down today as shaving her legs for wearing a smart business skirt was simply out of the question. After getting a few things off of her chest to her husband last night, she really felt surprisingly energized, despite the queasy feeling in her stomach and gripping headaches she had. Part of last night was a bit fuzzy. Did she really stand on top of the coffee table in her work attire and stocking feet to reenact yesterday's media briefing for her husband? Well... That doomed feeling of disgrace in the pit of her stomach told herself that, yes, you did do that. Kidding aside, today Miss Kirby spoke with confidence to the media confirming the search for Gannon was happening on a property nearby. Well, I hope so. All those vehicles and horses and docks and shit. And, well, shit from the docks and horses. Hope she didn't step in any shit. She said 82 people were out searching a 34-acre area. Crews and searchers were also looking for Gannon in northern El Paso County and southern Douglas County. So this expanded into an area more than 50 miles from Gannon's home. Now remember, earlier it was reported about a team of about 50 people. And didn't she say yesterday to not expect 130 people out searching every day? As customary, no reason or fox were given for the shift in the search. The pursuit of Gannon originally focused on the area around the Lorson Ranch neighborhood and on the southeastern edge of Colorado Springs, but we are told only that tips and leads guide their search. If I were a news reporter continually covering this story, at this point, I would have had more than enough of putting up with these hazy, ambiguous, fuzzy, unclear, puzzling, dubious, indeterminate, ambivalent, perplexing, vague-ass updates. It's not a fucking update. It's the same shit. Day in, day out. I'd be all like, fuck out of here with that shit. Beat it. Piss off. And shit. 
Quote, it's 35 acres, very different terrain. There are some treed areas. There's very rough terrain. There's terrain that goes down into deep ravines that would have to be gotten down by rope. Well, bully for you. So again, various terrain that they're navigating here. Yesterday, today, and we'll see how long into the weekend this search out here will go, said Kirby. Is she just using filler words? Remember in school, write a 500 word essay, the teacher would say. And in my day, you had to count that shit manually, by hand. So, what we would do is start throwing in extra these and ands and a however or therefore and splitting up compound words to make it two words. If your teacher was lazy, it would fly completely. When asked about the possibility that Gannon was abducted, give me a break, that Gannon was abducted, investigators say, quote, it's not above the realm of possibility, end quote. They say that shit a lot. They throw it in there like the ands and thus and however and therefores. Fucking bullshit is what it is. In many cases, missing children are found by focusing on areas within two or three miles of where the child went missing, said Tom Louth, a 30-year private investigator in Indiana, who was not involved in the search for Gannon, but was running his mouth about it for a news report. Generally speaking, children are found within 72 hours of going missing, he said. Why don't we change the direction from the searches going on to a little something different? Players for the Colorado Springs Tiger team wrap their hockey sticks in blue to show their support for Gannon Stauk. A Tigers hockey player says the idea caught on with the team within minutes. Quote, we taped our sticks blue because we just want Gannon to come home. And it's really sad how he went missing. And it affects us kids too. End quote. One of the players said. Well, isn't that sweet? They also honored Pisa with the duct tape, you know, because she's got duck lips. It'll just keep flapping and flapping all of the live long days in prison. There's a little news clip of these little gallant gentlemen that I will play at the end of this video. I hope they stay like this forever, but somebody will invariably blow it and fuck everything up. And before I go, I wanted to say that Hori and Rad Bad Slay Hell are just too involved for me. Th this story is just out of control. There is so much involved with it. And there's plenty of others that are covering it. So please don't expect full coverage. I'll, I will do bits and pieces here and there. But covering this complicated web of lies, murder and deceit, it would be a bit too much for me, and I will happily make a diss track at some point concerning Hori and Rad Slay Hell. They make me sick. They're child killers too, those precious children. And I'm hoping a Juicy Watts book will come out sometime in the future, something with a new twist, or hopefully one written by a family member. I would love that. Hell, even a family friend or acquaintance. But what I am most excited about is this trial for La Pisa shit. Something better not fuck it up like them declaring she's unfit. That will just piss me the hell off and talk about slamming off to bed. But if something does fuck up that trial where it doesn't take place, I may have to write a strongly worded letter to whomever fucked it up for us or made the decision that, yeah, she's batshit crazy and can't stand trial. Bye, Felicia. Much love and peace. Thank you for listening.
We know part of Thursday's search focused in this area off Perry Park Road. I also found investigators searching about a mile and a half south of there near Sierra Pines Lane. This whole area is more than 40 miles from Gannon's home south of Colorado Springs, the place where Gannon was reportedly last seen January 27th. The sheriff's office won't say exactly what led them to this location other than information they've received through the investigation. Even with the less than ideal weather conditions, they're staying positive. A new day brought renewed hope to find 11 year old Gannon Stauk. We've got the mounted unit out here. We've got canines out here. Day 17 of the search brought crews here, a large private property in another county more than 50 miles from Gannon's home. So as we get tips and leads and information through our investigation, that determines the search areas. 82 people scoured the 35 acre property at times using poles to search the deep snow. There's some treed areas, there's very rough terrain, there's uh, terrain that um, goes down into deep ravines. With back to back winter storms, Mother Nature hasn't made the search any easier, but the El Paso County Sheriff's spokesperson said winter weather will not slow them down. The search and rescue and, and the skilled individuals that we have out here are used to this kind of weather, used to living in Colorado. We know that it can be beautiful in, in 71 day and we can, the temperatures can plummet into the single digits. Despite their efforts to find any clues, the sun set on another cold night with no word of where Gannon might be. Jack, have you found anything? I would not be at liberty to elaborate. That's part of our investigation. And the spokesperson also said that other areas are also being searched, but they would not disclose exactly where that is happening. They did say that the Douglas County search is the most extensive and they are prepared to search that private property through the weekend if necessary. More than 130 people searched today near Palmer Lake. That is a much larger number of people that searched today than in the days past. When we asked El Paso County investigators about the possibility the Gannon might have been abducted. They said it is not above the realm of possibility. On day 17, 82 people went out to search for hope in southern Douglas County for the second day in a row. So as we get tips and leads and information through our investigation, that determines the search areas. Jackie Kirby is with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office looking for any clues into the disappearance of 11-year-old Gannon Stauk. 30 miles north of Gannon's home, searchers are here, going through public and private lands. 35 acres, very different terrain. Um, there's some treed areas, there's very rough terrain, there's uh, terrain that um, goes down into deep ravines that would have to be gotten down to by rope. Between 35 acres, 82 searchers, and 17 days, the only number that really matters, Kirby says, is one, finding the one boy. It is our hope to find Gannon still alive to bring him home safe to his family. That goal has never changed, and that is what we work for every day. Kirby says that searchers will be here at least through tomorrow and possibly through the weekend as well. When I asked her if they had found anything as of yet, she could not comment. When the Colorado Springs Tigers hit the World's Arena ice this weekend for their holiday tournament, you might just notice an addition to their gear. Tiger! Couldn't wear blue on our uh, jersey, so I said, uh, let's put blue on our sticks. In honor of Gannon Stout, the missing 11-year-old boy whose disappearance has hit home and on the ice. We just want him to come home, and it's really sad how he went missing, and it affects us as uh, kids, too. It's an important gesture. One that has brought this team closer together. A hockey family reaching out to another in their time of need. And I thought, wow, that's a, that's a terrific thing for Trey to do and for us to participate in. So I was all, I was all for it. I, I encouraged it and everybody, every kid put some blue tape on their stick somewhere because they were all thinking about it. A local team making it a sticking point to raise awareness for a member of the community. It's really tragic what happened and we want to support him in our best way. And you know, hockey is like a family and hockey is a family trying to support him as much as we can. One that could very well be sitting beside them on the bench. Yeah, we brought in tape and everyone put on their sticks and like we didn't even have to say, hey, let's all do this.
Michigan and on a day that never got above freezing, we still saw dozens of people from the command center just over my shoulder searching an area just down the road, combing through snow covered fields, digging through heavily wooded areas, looking for any trace of or looking for 11 year old Gannon Stout. As you mentioned, this is an area just north of Palmer Lake, just south of Larkspur. And today, multiple agencies really zeroed in on a 35 acre piece of property here in southern Douglas County because of tips that had come into the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. So sheriff's deputies, search and rescue, volunteers, canines, the horse mounted unit, the FBI and more all scoured through this area. A sheriff's spokesperson would not tell us if they found anything, but say that they expect this search to last today, tomorrow and potentially into this weekend. Letitia Stout tells me she feels the need to fill in some gaps in the investigation and Gannon's disappearance. She emailed me a statement in which she refers to Gannon as G and mentions the boy's father, Albert. Here's part of that statement. Saturday night, G was helping me unload in the garage and cut his foot because there are a lot of tools because Albert does woodworking. He sat on the edge of the car and we bandaged it up. He was good to go. She tells us how Gannon loves to help build with his dad in the garage, then says, after this, I noticed G kept going to the side of the house. He told me he was checking to see if the gate was locked because he was the only one with a gate key. It made him proud to be the man of the house while Albert was away. She finishes her statement with this. From day one, the sheriff's office has known a description of the person slash friend whom Gannon left with. I explained to them and provided evidence. They had information about G having the key to go out the side gate. Last, they have more in-depth details that go along with this pointing to who sent the person or why he may have come. Again, I repeat, they have had this initially, and I was asked to keep quiet about it so they could have the best shot at doing their job in bringing G home. The last thing they needed was a hindrance to their investigation. I encourage you to think of any suspicious cars that may have been in the area watching a few days prior and keep praying for G. I imagine it's pretty.